Auto. It's The Cube. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle The Cube. We're on the ground here in Silicon Valley at Mintigo's headquarters for Cube Conversation. I'm here with John Baer, President and CMO of Mintigo. Uh, John, good to see you. Uh, great, great, great job here. You're president now and CMO uh, of a marketing company using technology. How do you feel? Nice to see you, John. Thank you very much. I feel great. Um, and thank you for coming to Mintigo today. So I got to ask you, I mean, you've been a marketer, you've been a CMO, you've been part of a lot of successful operations. Uh, marketing's changed. So I want to get your take first of the, 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 the Mintigo story. What attracted you to this because as a marketer you've seen every trick trick of the trade you know the playbooks the old school blocking and tackling of marketing but what what's the big deal of Mindigo? share your thoughts well things are changing so rapidly in b2b marketing here in silicon valley and throughout the world with the emergence of social mobile all the new technologies um, cmos in many ways have become an endangered species if they don't adapt they will be, uh, become extinct. And so in that regard, for my career and my interest, I was looking for something that was new, modern, and solved a top three pain for CMOs, and meant to go fit the bill directly. What's the big thing, obviously? Data science is a no-brainer. People see that, and they can, they can look at it and say, okay, I can get behind that. It makes a lot of sense. Um, but there's a lot of tactical challenges that as people migrate to this new world, the Internet of Things is mm -hmm. connecting not only devices and databases, but people. People are yes. things, right? So yes. you have mobile, the mobile infrastructure is dwarfed, and so now you can really use signaling data to actually get information in the hands of the customer, or in this case, salesperson or marketing person at the right time. That seems to be the in the moment, real time aspect, which never been done before. Uh, what's your take on that and the impact of that for organizations, and, and, and what's the low hanging fruit for the CMO? What do they do first? Well, you're exactly right, John. So, uh, you know, I, I coach football, and that's one of my passions is to coach uh, youth football and high school football. And great football coaches have a playbook that has three sections, <laughs> offense, defense, and special teams. Similarly, great CMOs have a playbook with three sections. Build and create your brand. Uh, create and nurture demand and arm and aim your field and channel. So those are the three big playbooks for any great CMO, in my opinion. So if you break that down with building uh, and expanding your brand in today's world, it's just explosive. With all the social uh, endpoints, with uh, millennials getting involved, with uh, consumers taking over your brand and, and helping define your brand, every day, every minute, it's happening. There's been an explosion of data. And the definition of your brand has become real time in that regard. If you take the next section of the playbook, which is to create and nurture demand, I would argue it hasn't quite become real time. If you think about sales cycles that in some cases are six weeks, six months or longer, that's not real time. And so when I discovered Mintigo and I first met Jacob and Tao, I was struck by the ability of the data and the science to help dramatically shrink the sales cycles for sales and marketing. You know, I got to say, I mean, one of the things that, that's going on is, is the skeptics. I mean, I'm not a skeptic. You know, I'm bullish on data. That's all I do is talk about, you know, on the cube. I, I love big data. I've been covering it, you know, for many, many years now and living it with the CrowdChat product. But um, a lot of people are like skeptic, skeptical of, you know, another platform, another dashboard. I mean, it's almost like, you know, someone said to me, you know, you know just if someone comes in with a dashboard again, I'm going to kill myself. I and mean, that's like, that's the level of noise in the market. Some say snake oil. So how do you guys break out on the noise? And, and what's your comment for the folks that, and for customers out there that are trying to differentiate what is noise, what's value, and w what do you do in that, that space? Because that's a legit concern. Hey, yeah. are you real? Is it snake oil? Do I need another platform? Well, I don't think sales and marketing need yet another system. And Mintigo is not yet another system. It's not yet another dashboard. It's a capability that is embedded into your existing workflows and your solutions of choice. So whether it's Marketo or Eloqua, Oracle Marketing Cloud, uh, Salesforce, or even LinkedIn, 
the major channels that sales and marketing are using today, we fit right in. We work within the existing workflow, and that's a real differentiator for Mintigo. So it's basically an invisible part of those applications. So, so, so it's easy to stand up. If I'm a customer, is it easy to stand up some Mintigo tooling to get going? It's very easy to stand up. In fact, you know, we uh, had a, a demo on the uh, Oracle Marketing Cloud platform yesterday for some executives, and our engineer set it up in a matter of minutes, and we sort of joked about, uh, isn't this uh, a nice contrast to the days when you have, used to have to spend $100,000 to pay an integrator to implement your Siebel system, or even a million dollars, you know, so it's come a long way in that Well, a lot regard. of people are dealing with this. I want to ask that point. It's a good question, good, good segue question there, is that old way, new way, old way with buy a multi-million dollar, six to eight month rollout, professional services, millions and millions of dollars, to now the Splunk, the Tableau, the Salesforce, these are you know easy to entry points for the customer to get the value. So two questions: pricing value equation. How much does it cost to I get the value? Is that now the new normal? Get a little taste and then get the value and then you get the sale, or is it still the old you know big enterprise sales license thing? I think the old way is dead. I think the huge licenses, long-term commitments, those days are long gone. Uh, with the flexibility that's afforded by things like Amazon Web Services, you can spin up servers very rapidly. All the technologies from people like VMware, Zen, Citrix, you know, it enables uh, that instant computing, the uh, instant on computing. And that's what a company like Mintigo does, is it enables a marketer to just kind of pay as you go, pay by the drink, buy some licenses, fire up the model, use it again and again. And that's... That's really the new way. It's on demand, it's cloud-based, it's, it's grabbing the data and applying it to solve your business problem. So you got a great team here in the founders. Uh, I'm really impressed, certainly, you know, to see the synergy, great partnership there. And, and they have the chops, technically. So you're the new player, you're the draft pick, so to speak, come on board. You use your football analogy. What's your plan? I mean, you, are you still short some bodies? You need a wide receiver? You, what's, what's going on? Give us the Mintigo update and what draft picks are you looking to take and who are you hiring? And, Give us a state of the, the playbook. Well, um, we're always looking for the best athletes, absolutely. And uh, we are ramping up our go-to-market, so that means that we're adding in sales, marketing, and business development because we're taking this uh, market by storm. So there is no, I guess there's no agents in, this three in, in the tech athlete world. So you got, you got a couple key positions for go-to-market mainly, right, for now? Mainly go to market. We just uh, added a very strong uh, new enterprise VP of sales, uh, building out the marketing team. We've already got some great players here uh, using our own technology. So, you know, as they say, we're drinking our own champagne. What's the final question for you? Is what, tell the folks out there about Mintigo, if you can bumper sticker or summarize it, about what they might not know and, and the value they could get by working with it. Well, to me, the elevator pitch on Mintigo is find more buyers faster because. No marketer wants to see the shadow in their door of their head of sales saying, I need more leads, or your leads suck, or your programs and campaigns aren't working, I'm not able to hit the cash register, I'm not going to make my number, I'm not going to go to club, I'm going to have to fire some people. No marketer wants to go through that. You want to do the victory lap, you want to go to club, you want to help sales beat their numbers. And Mintigo can help B2B marketers provide those, those tools uh, for sales to beat their numbers and find more buyers faster. All right, John Baird, the president and CMO of Mintigo here at Mintigo Hagers. I'm John Furrier on the ground in Silicon Valley here at the Cube Conversation in Silicon Valley here at Mintigo's headquarters. Thanks for watching.